Okay, here we have a great identity question where it's going to basically take all of our different skills in solving identities, um, you know, memorizing certain identities, kind of using the cheating rule where we look at what we have on the left side and where we want to get to on the right side to determine the structure and everything else in between. So let's take a look. When we, when we look at this, there's a lot of functions going on. There's sine, cos, and tan. Um, the left side sort of all together, the right side's all apart. I'm going to choose to start with the left hand side. We always want to let the marker know what side we're going to use. Uh, and what I'm going to look at first is the structure. So the left hand side is one big fraction with everything together. But you can see that we need to get to the right hand side which has three distinct parts added separately. So I know that I'm going to have to break out this fraction somehow. We've got one single denominator so I can take both numerators and separate them over the denominator in two separate fractions. So I'm just going to say the right side equals 1 over cos to the 4x minus sine squared x cos squared x over cos to the 4x. Right, And the only reason I've done that again is just looking at the structure of where I have to get to on the right side. Uh, can't do much with this first term, 1 over cos to the 4x. However, we could say, okay, we don't want any fractions on the right side. So what's 1 over cos? Well, that's secant. So I'll call this secant to the 4x. Minus, what happens here? Cos squared x cancels with 2 of the cos squared x on the bottom. So we're left with cos squared x here, because 2 of them cancel with the top. Sine squared x over cos squared x. So now we could say, okay, hopefully this jumps out at you, as sine squared x over cos squared x is tan squared x. We know we're in terms of tan on the other side. So even though we don't have a negative 1 on the other side, it's probably not a bad idea. So secant to the 4x minus tan squared x. Okay, so now let's, again, stop and take a look. We've got two terms now over here on the left side in terms of secant and tan. And we still are after three terms on the right side, 1 being a constant, and then a tan to the 4, and a tan squared. So here's where I would say, okay, I don't want this secant around. Is there any way I can get from secant to tan? Well, hopefully our little identity of tan squared x plus 1 equals secant squared x. Hopefully that sort of jumps out at us as being, oh yeah, that's one that we should ideally have memorized. It comes from the cos squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. Um, it, it comes from that, but ho hopefully this kind of jumps out at you. Even if we don't have this memorized, we may have it on a formula sheet. Just try and keep in mind that tan squared x can be converted in some way towards secant squared x and vice versa. So because of that, I know that I can turn my secant squared x into tan squared x. But I don't have secant squared x, so I'm going to sort of force it in there. Secant to the 4x is the same as secant squared x squared. Right? That's the same as to the power of 4. Minus my tan squared x, which I'll keep around because the right side's in terms of tan. Now I do my substitution. I know my secant squared x is equal to tan squared x plus 1, and it's all squared is tan squared x. Okay, now we're only in terms of tan squared x, so we've got to be close. When we square this bracket, it's like foil. So tan squared x plus 1 times tan squared x plus 1. And we still have our minus tan squared x here. So I'll move up here now. Looks like we're on the right track. Foil this out, and we get tan to the 4x plus 2 tan squared x plus 1 and then we still have the minus tan squared x on the outside now you can see we've got the tan 4 to the x tan 4 of x sorry uh, 2 tan squared x minus 1 tan squared x so here and here that just equals 1 tan squared x which is what we want and we have the plus 1 so this equals the right hand side so again, a couple steps there. First thing, look at the structure and know that we don't want one fraction together. We've got to start breaking that out because we need three separate terms on the right side. Then once we get down to this stage here, 
that was key because we had a secant term and a tan term, but we only wanted tan on the right side. So we had to think, how can we, what's the relationship between secant and tangent? And that was this one here that we'd like to have memorized. Then the substitution comes fairly naturally, expand and simplify. So if you can use those sort of cheating rules, look at where you need to get to in terms of which trig function, as well as what the structure looks like, you should be able to get well on your way to solving these types of problems. You can always send us more questions if you have them, info at arnoldtutoring.com, and good luck on your next question.